Welcome to another episode of IHN and IHM Career Australia. I'm Vinesh Palan. So we are on a mission to decode what's happening around the world right now, especially with, in, in, with respect to careers, uh, what the job market is looking like and how everything is evolving. And uh, to help us with this, uh, today we have uh, Sharon with us. Sharon is a director and founder of a recruiting, recruiting agency called On The Ball Personal, which has been around for about 30 years now. Uh, welcome, Sharon. Hi, Vinesh. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Sharon? Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So most of our viewers or most of the people around the world uh, would like to hear it from a recruiter. What's happening right now, Sharon? Yeah, look, uh, yeah, we're obviously in very unprecedented times where, you know, companies have got hiring freezes on. Uh, there's a lot of people that are unfortunately unemployed and looking for the next opportunity. So uh, it is definitely unprecedented times. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we'll see a little bit of movement once uh, with jobs, once the stimulus package has been rolled out in May. But until then, I think it's like companies are just sitting and watching to see what's happening as well as job seekers. Yeah, I think everyone is uncertain as in what the environment will look like or what the scene will look like, how the business will go. So that's adding up on uh, the uncertainty. But I think there are some uh, organizations that are still hiring. I think uh, e-commerce uh, uh, organizations like Kohl's and Woolsworth, I hear there's a lot of activity in there. Yeah, look, I think it's an opportunity for job seekers to pivot now um, because there are definitely companies that are advertising and having roles. Now, it may not be in the like uh, in the role that you're used to having, but it is a position. Uh, it shows, you know, a perspective employer in the future that you have the ability to pivot, keep busy, and keep employed during COVID nineteen. Yeah, absolutely. And so, for job seekers. What can they do right now? I mean, um, there, there is something uh, always, uh, I wouldn't say wrong, the way that job seekers approach job search, they always want to get an offer. That's their ultimate objective, which uh, might not be the right thing right now or might not be a right objective right now. So what can job seekers do to make uh, the most of the time we are in right now? Yeah, look, I think there's there's so much they can actually do at the moment, Vinesh. So one of the things that I would do is most definitely make sure that their resume resume is is top notch. Um, make sure it's simple. I've seen a lot of resumes that are very long and have lots of what I call faff in there that doesn't need to be there. Um, I would also make sure your LinkedIn profile is you know up to date. How everything corresponds with your resume. Um, I'd also be looking at yourself as, as a brand and practicing your interview skills. And they, those interview skills will be video interviewing. So you are going to be, um, you know, showcasing your brand once those interviews turn around and that will all be done by video. So spend all your time doing that. Another thing they can do is upskill. Um, I think it's just recently Yale uh, has in fact offered free courses. So if you have time on your hands, have a routine, get those things done, keep practicing, you know, upskill, do what you can do in this space. Absolutely. Um, interesting point that you shared as in uh, how you how you should be comfortable with video. We were just having a conversation on that, you know, mm -hmm. how uh, how insecure we feel, you know, seeing ourselves in a video. <laughs> so it's, it's not easy. It's not like you pick up the phone, you record yourself and you're ready for an interview. There is a lot of practice. There is a lot of uh, yeah. um, technicalities involved in that so make sure that you're comfortable with that as well and upskilling absolutely um, uh, what I recommend is don't just uh, stick to the technical upskilling part you know go for the uh, personal hobbies that you have cooking uh, painting uh, fitness mindfulness anything you know invest your yeah. time in that so that you can make the most out of it uh, so but yeah um, Yes, upskilling and uh, um, resume, LinkedIn, these are the essential tools that you can invest on mm. uh, on a technical aspect of it. Um, what about networking? Does networking have the same importance that was there before this shutdown period? Yeah, look, I think networking is even more important at the moment. You know, we're all isolated. So, you know, having that social contact is huge. So there's a lot more opportunities to network that come up. And your network might be the fact that, you know, you are connecting with other people. 
And my first point of call when you are seeking an opportunity is to go to your network. So if you are expanding that network this whole time that you're in isolation, as well as looking for any other job opportunities, uh, that will be very important. But one thing about networking is you must show up, you know, really authentic, be yourself. Um, you can't project a, a different reality because really at the end of the day, we're all in this together and showing up as the most authentic self uh, will be one of your greatest tools. Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, Sharon. I, I absolutely love how networking can have a whole uh, impact. As in, um, I was part of a webinar where um, mm -hmm. a st international students shared the story as in how they uh, requested for help and they did not get. And you saw that post and you reached out to them. Yeah. You know, if they had not networked, that wouldn't have been possible. And I, in in my, one of my catch ups today, I also got a question as in. Um, how can they improve their interviewing skills? As in, would someone be ready to take a mock interview? Uh, I said, you know, there are 10 people in this uh, webinar. Ask in, in, any one yeah. of them, you know, just, just uh, you know, say, hey, can you take a mock interview for me? Because both are job seekers, yeah. they know what happens in interview. So these are all, you know, the fun stuff that you can do and the small things. I yeah. mean, these are Absolutely. like really easy things that you can do to improve yourself. Yeah. Like, a hundred percent and we're, we're so lucky in a lot of ways so i'd rather look at it as glass half full than half empty yeah. you know we've got phones we can film ourselves we can do this multiple times we can grab somebody and like you said vinesh we can network and say hey you know i'm um, let's let's battle test some questions that we might get asked in an interview yeah. you know all of those things we have these on this online capability that we need to spend the time utilizing because one of the questions that I've no doubt that most brands will ask to job seekers is how did you spend your time in isolation during COVID-19? That's a, that's a good one. I mean, I, I have not uh, thought in that perspective, but if you yeah. don't have a good answer there, yes, you're definitely going to be in trouble. So uh, yeah. thanks, thanks for that. I, I'll definitely put that point across in my upcoming events as well. Uh, yeah. Now, self-care. Uh, we are so job seekers, especially we are so focused on uh, trying to make something happen, upskilling, networking, uh, doing this, doing mm -hmm. that. But there is a part where we are struggling to survive as well. And self-care, be yeah. it physical or mental, is very important. What would you recommend uh, on this? Uh, yeah, aspect look, track? absolutely. I think self-care is a very big part of being uh, in ISO at the moment. Uh, look, I think having a lovely, like having a routine. Uh, is so important, you know, because a routine, when we stick to that, that empowers us. So that's a bit of self-care because it's it's showing us that we're we're ticking those boxes. But part of that routine should be exercise. We are allowed to exercise. So going for a walk, bicycle ride, I would definitely get out and clear your mind. There's lots of online tools, you know, um, about meditation. Uh, I think that's a great thing. You know, you could spend your time visualising your interview or opportunities that come up is reading. I listen to whatever I'm doing. I have got a podcast going. I've got a book going. I'm watching webinars. You know, I'm. T you know, those things are just. You know, really help me at times where I feel that. You know, it's a little bit bleak, or. Um, you know, it's just that self care works for me. But there's a lot of things. But meditating, most definitely, exercise, getting those endorphins out there, are uh, all really powerful self care tools. Yeah, it's a, uh, on meditation. That's absolutely on point, Sharon. So I was a person mm. who never kind of valued what meditation or mindfulness were. And it's still really hard for me. I can't get to do it. But uh, the way I think it right now, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're just sitting and either watching TV, watching news or doing something else or binging something, part of your mind is always worried about what's happening out there, what's happening in the world, yeah. what's the news looking like. There are many people dying, many people getting infected people mm. losing their job. So your brain always likes to wander, your brain likes to think. But if you can focus on something for 30 minutes, you know, uh, not not 30 minutes, probably even 10 minutes yeah. to start with as my, part of mindfulness, it just declutters your thoughts, at least for that period of time and makes your brain that much more healthy. So yeah. I, I think that's an absolutely important thing to add into your mm. daily routine. 
Yeah. It brings down your cortisol levels as well when we're in that high anxiety state. You know, often we can't think clearly. So building in a morning meditation, and it's not easy, you know, you, but we've got that opportunity now. So, so COVID-19 has actually given us the great opportunity to reset, reset and build some of these things in that are fundamental to our business, you know, and our lives. Tell me about that. It's not easy at all. Uh, one minute I yeah. concentrated on my breath and the other minute I don't know where I am. So it's really <laughs> hard. But I think yeah. uh, it definitely it's worth it. Um, so uh, yeah. right now, what can, what, what can uh, or what's the best way for job seekers to reach out to recruiters? As in things have changed. There are no, me- no more meetups that they can uh, go and, uh, you know, meet some recruiters mm. or, you know, recruiters yeah. are working from home as well. So the whole uh, environment has changed. So what would be the best uh, strategy or what would be the best way for uh, job seekers to get in touch with recruiters? Right yeah. Now? Look, I think it's, it's going to be um, like a, a test and measure as they go because it's a, it's about aligning themselves with a recruiter that uh, has that follow up and that follow back that's going to be very important you know you've got a job seeker here who's isolated not working you know and that means they're quite raw uh, and they need to they need to have that connection and you have a recruiter on the other hand their work has definitely been impacted but the, they could spend their time connecting with job seekers so when that turn happens there's that relationship, boom, you've got a great candidate. But that is not uh, what every recruiter is doing at the moment. So for job seekers out there, it is a little bit of test and measure. And I would be connecting with them on their websites. Um, You can connect with them on Instagram, on LinkedIn. And I would just see how quickly they respond. And if they're not responding, then they're not in line with your values. And I'd move to the next one. I think that um, relationship can be really valuable, can't it? Won't it? Oh, It's going to be pivotal. Like of all times, it's going to be very pivotal. If the job seeker has feels uh, secure with you and valued, uh, and that gives the recruiter that credibility, you know that's that's helping both brands, you know, like incredibly. And you know, I've been very transparent. There are job seekers that I'm talking to that I don't have any roles with, but I can certainly have conversations to you know boost their uh, their mindset. Um, give them little, you know, tips and tricks that they can go and work on. It just gives them something to focus on, and that's really important. But that fills our cup because we're not recruiting at the moment, so therefore, you know, we feel instrumental in helping someone else as well. And and I, I can't reinforce or reiterate the importance of building that relationship right now because yeah. um, the audience that uh, I serve or the most of our viewers are migrants and who already have a few obstacles to cross. It could be visa, yeah. local experience and things like that. And now with the market, uh, there's a huge influx of people who have lost their jobs as well and you will be competing with them. And the relationships you build right now, the relationships you build with recruiters or other people right now will have a huge factor or a huge uh, decisive factor over there. Absolutely. Because when, when you know, the tide does turn, you know, companies look for talent and they don't want to go out there and advertise when they've already built themselves a talent pipeline. And that's where job seekers have got to get really savvy and be part of that talent pipeline. You know, you've got to think company A goes, we're looking for a contract administrator. Oh, I spoke to Chandy the other day. I'm going to reach out and see if he's still available. Hmm. Boom. No advertising. You know, it's it's all done via building your your brand network. And that is going to be powerful. And, you know, connecting with others, commenting, not coming from a salesy point of view. You can't sell yourself. It's got to be about that authentic connection. Yeah. Uh, thanks. So, um, now let's get back to the resume at LinkedIn and or, or even the cover letter part of it. Is there something special that uh, job seekers has to do during this right time, uh, right now to emphasize something on LinkedIn or there's, there are a lot of things that they can do on LinkedIn, but is there something special that recruiters might be looking out at this moment or when the market comes back as in, is there something special that they can do? Look, I think, you know, and I look through my eyes only, I look at everyone's resume, but the ones that, you know, you've got to think sometimes, even if it's not a recruiter, let's say it's a company direct, not everybody's very good at hiring. So you almost need to make your resume so robust that it gets through, even if somebody, you know, isn't really sure what they're doing. Um, So it's got to be simple. Just make sure you've taken out all the noise. Um, I often say to people, what most companies are looking for is you know, your latest jobs, 
perhaps the last sort of eight to ten years, everything you've done in those roles and, you know, your education plus any achievements, that's really it. Um, you know, all the bits and pieces that people tend to build in um, is, is really just noise at the moment. And you've got to imagine that when the tide does turn again, when, when jobs are all, you know, everyone's hiring, instead of having 50 applications when the market was tight, we're going to have 500 applications. Mm. So if it's clean, it's simple, it's going to get looked at very quickly. If it's too cumbersome, some, you know, it'll, they'll just move off it, unfortunately. And it's the same with LinkedIn. Really make it s streamlined. I would definitely highlight achievements, uh, any successes you've had. People look at those. It's it's almost evidence of your ability. Um, yeah, all of that. Any any study that you're doing at the moment, I'd update that as well, because it just shows anyone who's hiring that you've been busy and uh, and you you know haven't been laying there watching Netflix. You've been you know taking courses and upskilling. So yeah. So uh, uh, you mentioned that you've been helping a lot of people in the past couple of weeks, you know, building their resume or giving feedback on the resume, LinkedIn and cover letter. What is one common mistake or one common uh, myth that you have seen in this uh, resumes? Yeah. So, look, there's probably two, Finesh. One is that there's heaps of stuff that shouldn't be in the resume. So we go through and we just cull that out. So it becomes really streamlined. Could you give uh, an example of what, what, what that was? Yeah, so people will say what their objective is, and that objective will be like two paragraphs long. So sometimes I've seen resumes that have got, you know, areas of expertise, you know, skills. It's a whole front page of all that stuff without even getting to the jobs that they've done, the experience that they've got. So I've asked them to trim that out. People will be going straight to see what they've done, who they've worked for, how long they've worked there, uh, if there's any gaps and making sure you, you say what those gaps are. If that's a study break, overseas travel, make sure you fill everything in so it's so crystal clear to anyone who's hiring that it's ticking the box for them and they go, great, let's give this person a call. And then the candidate, they can weave their, their magic. That's that's them, that's gonna be their, uh, you know, obviously sweet spot to be able to connect with that, uh, that interviewer. The other thing I've seen a lot of is cover letters are almost a replica of a re of a resume mm. and it's not what a cover letter should be so i've remodeled some of the the cover letters for some of the candidates where it's it's quite short it's also very authentic it's just drawing a parallel to why they've applied what's their motivation for the role and you know put in you know perhaps their achievements or something significant that ties into that but you don't write uh a replica or a short version of your resume in the covering letter. It's just doubling up. Yeah, that just beats the uh, purpose of a cover letter. Uh, interestingly, yeah. I actually had a question during my catch up today. Um, what is the difference between a resume and cover letter or how should it, uh, what are the different target audience that they uh, go for? So uh, uh, good point there shouldn't be a copy paste. Nothing should be a copy paste. That's what I say, you know, <laughs> the objective section, especially that you mentioned, usually it's a copy paste from some resume template created by someone. I like, <laughs> yeah. ah, it's, it's just, you, you just read the first line and you understand that it's, uh, there's yeah. no personalization in there. Yeah. So your cover letter is a little bit of a window into who you are, whereas your resume is all the facts. Uh, it's the, it's all the facts that you've done. It's your experience, but but the cover letter is a window into your soul about you know your personality. So I I like to use it for that reason. Um, so it's more authentic. I don't like to see covering letters that say, you know, uh, I have attached my resume for your perusal. I'd rather say, you know, um, you know, I've got I've, you know attached a copy of my resume. You know, take a deep dive, have a look at the experience I've got, um, and just make it a very real conversation as opposed to you know, very sort of stark. Excellent, excellent points, uh, Shyam. Thanks for sharing with us. Now, uh, final question to you. You have been around for a long, long time. You've been, uh, you founded uh, On The Bond Personal 30 years ago and you have seen mm -hmm. probably, uh, I, I don't know if this is a worse situation we are in, but you have seen a lot of ups and downs. What do you think is a way back right now or how do you think we'll evolve uh, right now? Yeah, so that's a great point, Vinesh. Uh, I started my business uh, when uh, it was the recession we had to have. I'm not sure if many will remember that, no. but interest <laughs> rates was, went to 17.25%. And people said to me, you're absolutely crazy. But funnily enough, I thrived during that time. Look, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I do think um, 
the economy will be slow for some time, but there will be opportunities coming up. I think we won't, we won't see a lot of those opportunities till June, just because companies are seeing how much uh, do they get, how much cash mm-hmm. are they going to get from the government, how much, you know, uh, and what will they do with that cash? Is that to survive or is that to rehire, you know, some pretty vital people? So I think at the moment, um, not much will happen around May, but still, I could be totally wrong. So keep your eye on the ball, keep looking. You know, I'd never not look, but I think once they understand how much the government's going to support the companies and what they've got from that, as in dollars and cents, we'll see some movement in the hiring space. Good insight, Shayan. Thanks for that. But as a job seeker, as you mentioned, don't wait for that to happen. No. You have tons to do right now. Utilize your time uh, uh, really good. Uh, thanks a lot, Sharon, for sharing your time with us. That definitely gave us a You're lot welcome. of insights on uh, how the market looks right now and what job seekers can focus on. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome, Vinesh. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And uh, uh, you mentioned that you're helping out uh, people, you know, yeah. uh, making their resume better or giving some feedback on their cover letter and LinkedIn. How can they re- uh, reach out to you, Sharon? Yeah, that they can reach out to us via the website uh, or connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, that's how really most people are connecting is on LinkedIn. And, you know, um, it's it's been amazing. We've actually uh, helped so many people and it's really made my team feel amazing actually we i think we underestimated how much we would uh gain from it as well so yeah it's been incredible so good to hear that Shan. thanks for your time yeah. um as always uh, as we mentioned uh, previously we are trying to decode what's happening right now and we are trying to bring in experts to decode help help us decode how job seekers can move on and what happens in the career perspective if you have any inquiries or questions for us please write to us at careeraustralia at m4tv.com.au um, Uh, Until next time, thanks and bye-bye.